Spyro Enter the Dragonfly is one of the most disappointing games I have ever played. Even as a kid, I knew something wasn't right. In fact, this game depressed me so much, I never played any Spyro game after this one. It's a challenge all on its own to play this game and not experience any bugs. We've already made challenge videos on the original trilogy where we clipped Spyro's wings, and this time it's no different. Our reasoning has always been that the games have become too easy as the years went on, and whereas it's still the case here, we have the added incentive to show off just how broken this game is. Can you beat Spyro Enter the Dragonfly without gliding? Let's find out. Here are the rules, but first, I just want to say that if you enjoy challenge videos like this then please subscribe, after all, more than 80% of people watching our videos aren't subscribed yet, I'll love you forever. Back to the rules. Rule number one, no gliding or flying. After all, we're treating this challenge as if Spyro's wings have been clipped. Rule number two, glitches within the game are allowed, we just can't hack. And rule number three, once we defeat Ripto, the final boss of the game, we win. The only other thing to mention is that we are playing the GameCube version of this game for this challenge. We start the game in the one and only homeworld, Dragon Realms. If we run on over to the left near some shallow water, we can see a portal on the ground. This is the portal that leads to the final boss, but it's currently sealed shut. However, if we perform a well-placed head bash, we clip right through the ground and into the final boss arena. Defeating Ripto does not require any gliding whatsoever. We simply chase him down and flame him over and over until we win. The run is over. Can we beat Spyro? Enter the dragon... Yeah, alright, we can't end it like that. Just like with our other Glideless Spyro videos, we're gonna be attempting 100% completion. Let's start again. Dragon Realms may be the only homeworld in the game, but it's fairly big, and sections of it are blocked off by gates until we make enough progress. Well, they're supposed to be blocked off at least. The main gimmick of this game is that Spyro can learn different types of breath powers other than just fire. These are learned by handing dragon runes over to the dragon statue. And the first one is right in front of us. This teaches Spyro bubble breath, and this is used to capture dragonflies. If we want 100% completion, we need to rescue all 90 dragonflies in the game. There are 10 in each level, the homeworld included. This means there are 8 other levels for us to enter from the homeworld. Throughout all of these levels, there's plenty of gems for us to collect as well, and the whole game has 7,000 gems in total. This means our goal is to collect 7,000 out of 7,000 gems and 90 out of 90 dragonflies for 100% completion. First of all, we will collect all the gems in the opening area of Dragon Realms. It's not long before we see Hunter who wants to give us a gliding tutorial. After speaking with him, he jumps across a gap and he waits for us there to follow him. It is possible to jump down and then back up to this ledge, but if we fall down first, Hunter will return to his previous position. So unless we can clear these gaps without gliding or falling down, we can't beat this tutorial. So it's time to introduce a couple of glitches early on. There's a glitch that can be used a lot throughout the game, and it's ridiculous how easy it is to do. If you hold down the look button whilst an NPC is talking to Spyro, you can prevent the game from loading the next part. The look button is triangle on PlayStation and Y on GameCube. If we hold the look button down as Hunter is speaking to us, as soon as he's finished, he won't jump over the gap. If we let go of Y, then this delay is removed and Hunter will then jump over immediately. Whilst we're holding Y, we can fall down and jump to the ledge. And now we let go of Y and Hunter jumps over to meet us. It's kind of like we're giving him the tutorial instead. Hunter wants us to glide over one more gap and this time we can't jump there from the bottom. There is another glitch we can use to get up there though, and it's called the walk in air. To activate this glitch, we need some altitude first. We jump up a few ledges on the other side of the area. There is one very awkward jump, but it is doable with a precise charge jump. Once we're up here, we need to charge into a wall to make Spyro bonk his head. But it needs to be done a certain amount of height above solid ground. We need to jump over the edge here and bonk into the wall, but as Spyro falls down to the lower floor, we need to make sure the left analog stick is kept in the neutral position. This causes the game to think that Spyro has made contact with the ground sooner than it actually does. As long as there is solid ground beneath
beneath us, Spyro will be walking in the air. If Spyro falls all the way to the ground instead, it either means we were too high up from the ground or we were too close to the ground when we bonked. When we get the walking air to work, Spyro is now able to walk or run anywhere at that same altitude. We can still jump too, but as soon as we do, we deactivate the glitch. Bonking into a wall also deactivates the glitch. We can use this to walk over to the last platform that Hunter jumps to, but we need to talk to him first to get him to jump over. So, we simply need to combine these two glitches together. We talk to Hunter after the first gap. We hold down the look button and then run over to the platforms on the other side of the area. We climb up for some altitude, make the awkward charge jump, jump over the edge and bonk into the wall to activate the walk in air glitch, all whilst holding the look button of course, and then we just run over to the last platform that Hunter jumps to. When we get close to the ground during a walk in air, the game pulls Spyro down to his feet. Once we're over here, we can finally let go of the look button. Hunter will jump over to us and then reward us with a dragonfly. Also, since we're up here, we can start the time challenge by walking through these two spires. It just gives us a time limit to flame all the scarecrows for another dragonfly fly, but you don't need to glide to reach them at all. Keep the look button glitch and the walk in air glitch in mind though, we're going to be relying on those a fair bit. Each of the game's 8 levels has a minimum number of dragonflies that we need to have collected before we can enter them. The first level is Dragonfly Dojo, which can be accessed after only one dragonfly is rescued. As we mentioned, there are 10 dragonflies to rescue per level, and this level also has 700 gems. Each level also has its own unique main task that we need to finish as we progress. In this case, we need to free five frozen dragon masters from being trapped in ice. The first half of this level can be explored casually. We even find a rune for Spyro's electric breath part way through. We do see some ledges we can't reach, and we also see a kite stuck in a tree above a rock but we'll come back to those soon. As we get close to the end of the level, we see money bags for the first and only time in the entire game. He wants 200 gems to create a bridge over this huge gap, but the annoying thing about this is that we will never be able to get those 200 gems back like we could in Spyro Year of the Dragon. If you played this whole game casually and you got all 7,000 gems, but you paid 200 gems to money bags, your total gems at the end would be stuck on 6,000 we're not having that in this run, so we won't be paying money bags for that bridge. We'll find our own way across. Right at the start of the level, there are some raised ledges that we can jump up to gain some altitude. I don't know why they're here, but thank goodness they are. If we jump over the edge and bonk into the wall here, we can now walk in air. The plan is to progress through the level like this and see if we can use this altitude to reach the end of the level. As we follow the level's main path, we are high up enough to just be able to walk through the walls since they're not solid up here, but this also means that we're too high up to hit the loading triggers for the next areas, and we get this unsettling sight. Despite the fact we can't see the ground here, it is still there. If we were to jump right now, then Spyro would fall and stand on the ground, even though it's invisible. If that floor is near a loading trigger though, then the area will suddenly load in. We found ourselves at a portal that leads to the game's first of three speedways. I will use this time to quickly go over all three speedways now, because we can't complete any of them. Spyro will always start the speedways flying automatically. We did discover that sometimes the speedways will load Spyro already standing on the ground for some reason, but we'd still need to fly to be able to hit all the rings in the air. Something else that's amusing, if we head bash, but then quickly pause the game and give up, whilst Spyro is upside down, and then we retry, Spyro will suddenly assume the position he was when we gave up. We can even fly around upside down like this, and we can still use our flame breath but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to last long before the game fixes itself. Shame. With that in mind, we will be skipping all three speedways in this game. Each speedway would have rewarded us with two dragonflies each, so that's already six out of the total 90 that we can't get. We exit the portal back to the Dragonfly Dojo. Since we're already up here, we grab the gems on these high ledges by charge jumping from one to the other. Sometimes we get strange things like this happen though. We just have to cross our fingers and hope the game 
holds together long enough for us. So, we want to make sure we're high up enough to maintain some altitude, but low enough to hit the loading triggers as we progress through the corridors. Well, once we have the walk in air, we make our way to the first corridor. We can now bunk into a solid wall to lower our altitude on the walk in air. This now ensures that we're low enough to hit the loading triggers and the next area loads in no problem. Now that we can see, we can grab the kite stuck on the rock. Nothing happens right away, but as long as we stand on top of the rock and then talk to the baby dragon, the kite will be lowered in a cutscene. Although now the following area is deloaded, even though we approached it on the ground this time. Thankfully it loads in as soon as we walk forwards. We will want to walk in air to skip paying money bags though. So we get the same walk in air at the start of the level, lower our altitude in the corridor again, and then when we get to the next building, we can't get through the roof, so we need to use the wall nearby to lower our altitude once more. And now we can just squeeze under the roof. The next corridor loads in as we enter, but when we get to the next area, we see the other side of the bridge is still not loaded. We must approach the fairy to load it in, but this also pulls Spyro to the ground. After grabbing everything here, we find a portal to a tank minigame, which we complete casually for a dragonfly. At the end of the corridor, we find a gap that we cannot get over. With no high platforms above solid ground, we can't get a walk in air here either. This means that we are now stranded here, and the only way out is to either kill ourselves, but if we want to save the lives, we can just pause the game and exit the level. This keeps our progress, and we simply just re-enter the level to carry on. We can repeat the same sequence that we used in the first place to get the walk in air, and use it to get back to the other distant ledge. Once once we've freed the kite here, and have all the collectibles, we're stranded once more. The intended way off this island was to use a whirlwind to glide back. In our Spyro 2 and 3 videos, we banned whirlwinds, since even if we hold the charge button as we exit the whirlwind, Spyro still glides for a single frame. So for that reason, we'll be banning whirlwinds in this run as well. We exit the level from the pause menu again, and re-enter once more. We get the same walk in there in the same place as usual, but this time Time, we want to walk around the level backwards by going out of bounds. Since most Spyro levels are made to loop around back to the start again, the level's ending is actually right behind a big door at the beginning of the level, so we're hoping to walk around the level out of bounds to get to the other side of that door. However, we need to be careful not to clip back in bounds, as there are big gaps that we cannot get across without a walk in air. The problem is, it's quite difficult to get this area to load in without losing the walk in air. The best way we found to load this area in but stay walking in the air is to walk all the way around it, quite far out, and then get inside the corridor where the tank portal was. This loads in the whole area, and now we can walk to the central island shaped like a spiral, travel to the top of the spiral to rescue another frozen dragon master. We can use the altitude and the shape of this island to our advantage and get another walk in air. With this, we walk walk to the last part of the level and free the last kite. With that, we have been to every part of this level, which means we have all 700 gems and 8 out of 10 dragonflies since we can't get the two from the speedway. We exit the level from the pause menu again and hand in the rune for the lightning breath power. We use it to open the lightning gate which gives us access to three more NPCs. One of them only requires six dragonflies to be rescued before they take you to their level, so we'll head there. This is Crop Circle Country. The beginning of the level isn't bad at all. This gap can be cleared with a charge jump. We do see some gems out of our reach on a couple of high up ledges though. Shortly after that we come to a gap that a charge jump just won't clear. This barn that we're standing in is the highest altitude we can reach so far, and we still can't get a walk in air from it. Whenever we try to bonk the side of the barn, this happened instead. We found that this just happens when bonking into some of the walls in this game. So we'll need a different plan. As we mentioned in Dragonfly Dojo, most Spyro levels loop back to the beginning again, and this one is no different. There is a big barn door that blocks us from getting to the very end of the level from the start. And if you charge into walls or doors that are intended to move, then Spyro won't bonk, 
This means that we can keep charging into the door like this. The intention here is to clip through the door and get straight to the end of the level. This is where the game's poor frame rate actually comes in useful. We need to lag the game enough as we charge into this door. A high number of enemies on screen usually causes this to happen, but all we need to do is flame breath the door and then charge into it right after. The smoke effect as the flame hits the door lags the game quite a lot, and eventually after spamming flame and charge enough, Spyro can clip straight through. Since we're here, we can open the barn door from this side by setting off the explosives. Now we can make our way through the rest of the level backwards. This allows us to make more progress and get more collectibles. There is a portal to a mini game that seems difficult to reach, but close by is a ladder that gives us our highest point of altitude in the level so far. We can easily get a walk in air from here and then jump straight into the portal. The mini game in here is actually a heavy platforming section where we need to head bash buttons and zap these metal rods on moving platforms, but thankfully, as tedious as this is, it's fully possible without gliding. Now we continue going backwards through the level until we see a silo with a ladder on it. Naturally, we can use this for another walk in air. We use this to reach another portal with a flying saucer minigame. No gliding needed for this minigame, but it's still incredibly frustrating, and it's full of lag. We get two dragonflies here, and then we get out as soon as we can. The super flame that we find in this level doesn't help the lag situation either. The walk in air from the silo is also high enough to help us reach some higher ledges in the area for some more gems. We are also just high enough to travel all the way through the level's beginning again without being pulled to the ground. The starting area isn't loaded in as a result, but the gems can still be seen seemingly floating in midair. We make sure to start walking instead of running to prevent bonking in any invisible walls, and once we reach the high up ledge with the gems on, the area loads in around us. We can just reach the next ledge with a charge jump, and this nets us the last of the level's 800 gems. The remaining dragonflies can be earned by finishing off the level's remaining missions, like powering up the machines with lightning breath or herding cows, except Spyro gets stuck on the cow first classic. That's 100% completion in Crop Circle Country. The next level, Luau Island, only requires 15 dragonflies to enter, so we'll head there next. Early on, we find a rune for the wing shield ability. Then we open a gate with a button and move on to the following area. We see some high up platforms, a couple of gates, one with a dragonfly trapped behind it, and a body of water with a couple of platforms floating on it. Fun fact, the dinosaur enemy next to the gate can actually push Spyro right through the gate door. This allows us to get the dragonfly in here, but now the issue is we're trapped inside with no way out. If this happens to you, the only option is to exit the level from the pause menu and re-enter again. The only way to continue from this area is to submerge underwater and swim through a tunnel. On the other side, we climb a ladder to see another gate blocking our way. There is a ledge behind us that has a couple of enemies and a button for the locked gate. But we can't quite get over there without gliding. What we can do, however, if we go back down to the water we emerged from and head bash right on the very edge of the water, we can achieve a swim in air glitch. Sometimes when using the swim in air, Spyro is forced to be constantly swimming forward at charging speed, but we can hold the jump button to swim at normal speed to counter this though. Using this swim in air, we can get to that ledge and collect the gems on it, but we can't kill the enemies up here since these particular enemies need to be hit with breath attacks and Spyro can't use breath attacks while swimming. This also means we can't use our bubble breath while swimming to rescue any dragonflies either. We can't even charge into the button while swimming, but we don't need to. We can swim anywhere we want now. Even if we wanted to ensure that we hit the loading triggers, we can just swim through the gap to continue the level. This leads out to the higher platforms in the previous area. But since we can still swim everywhere, we use this opportunity to collect as many gems as we can throughout the whole level. We can swim over the top of any gates in our way. We can even charge into the wooden enemies to kill them, but we have to leave all the dinosaurs since they need to be breath attacked. Eventually, the game starts to reject the idea of us swimming wherever we want, and the following area isn't loaded. Everything is still solid here, we just can't see it. So we decided to swim back to the area with the floating platforms. We can take advantage of the fairy checkpoint on one of the high platforms here. If we get zapped to update our checkpoint and then get ourselves killed, we will respawn at the fairy, but we will no longer be swimming in the air. 
Now we can head bash the button to open the gate. And we can even use our new altitude to achieve a walk in air. We walk over to the other side to get on the other high ledge, climb a ladder, and then activate the power up. This gives us super flame for a limited time. We're supposed to use this to shoot four targets around the walls in this area in order to raise the two floating platforms out of the water. It's then intended that we would glide from one to the next to reach another dragonfly. However, if we raise the platforms, they will be too far apart, and then we will have permanently prevented ourselves from ever rescuing that dragonfly. We also can't get a walk in air high enough to reach the dragonfly either. So instead of hitting all four targets, we shoot three of them, and then we jump down and stand on the furthest floating platform. Now we shoot the fourth target from here, and the platform raises up, lifting us along with it, which makes it easier to rescue the dragonfly. We can also make further use of the super flame power-up. We make our way back to the power-up in the same way as before. As soon as we get the power-up, we quickly dive into the water and swim through the tunnel like we did before. We quickly climb the ladder on the other side and then quickly shoot the super flame at the two dinosaurs that we couldn't reach before. We only just had enough time before the power-up went away to pull this off. Now we can get another swim in air with that head bash again on the water's edge and then swim up to collect the gems the dinosaurs dropped. We can manually end the swim in air by touching actual water again and from there we will carry on to the next part of the level since we opened this gate earlier. This area has more water and a couple of ladders to reach higher platforms. This ladder looks like it's just far enough away that a glide might be required, but Spyro can just reach it with a normal jump. This is where you would normally perform a long glide to a distant island, but we can get a walk in air and just run over there. We also got the gems here with a swim in air earlier, but we needed to get here on foot to kill the dinosaur and rescue the dragonfly. There is also a portal here that leads to a mini game that's done underwater, so it can be played casually. When Spyro exits the mini game, he just starts doing this on the water's surface for some reason. There is another underwater tunnel for us to swim through. Also, make sure to swim through these arches when you see them, as this will spawn a yellow gem, and sometimes that yellow gem will just stay on the surface of the water. From here, we can climb a ladder and head bash the last button to rescue the last pig. Only the gate doesn't open, it just disappears. Sure, I've learned to stop questioning these things. Before leaving here, we can get a walk in air nearby to reach the further platforms and this boat. This allows us to kill the enemies up here, grab the gems, and fire this cannon to free another dragonfly. Now we want to head through the tunnel behind the last pig. It leads back to the very start of the level, only now we can reach some gems that we couldn't reach before. However, there is a gap in our way down here, and falling down would mean going back to the very beginning of the level again. We can't get back up here from the bottom either, not without using a whirlwind. Unfortunately, we couldn't clear the gap, so we had to run through the whole level again just to get back up here. This time, we will use our initial height to get a walk in air. That way, we can reach the other side of the gap, grab some gems, and enter the portal. This just leads to a Simon Says minigame, so once again, we play it casually. Most of the portals in this game tend to lead to mini games that don't require any gliding. With that, we have completed Luau Island 100%. We can now hand over the wing shield rune before entering the next level, although the entrance to that level is on a raised platform at the start of Dragon Realms, so we need to use that same walk in air from the beginning in order to be able to reach it. This brings us to Cloud 9, and this one was a difficult level in a glideless run. The very beginning of the level has a rune for Ice Breath, and also, right away, we can see several platforms all spaced out from each other. These platforms were very much intended to be glided to, but there is still one path we can take. This way leads us to a pool of water and steps that lead to the top of this tall room. We can just climb these stairs to the top without gliding, but what we actually want is a swim in air. Head bashing next to the water isn't quite as reliable this time, but we have another way. Just like with the walk in air, we bonk into the wall above the water. As we fall down, we hold the charge button. Spyro would normally stop in midair to begin a walk in air. This works due to the game thinking he hit the ground sooner than he does. But if we're above water, the game thinks we hit the water sooner than we actually do. So holding the charge button after the bonk on the wall will cause Spyro to dive under the water before he touches the water. Now we can go on a lengthy swim all over the entire level, collecting as many gems as we possibly 
possibly can. Entering swim in air with this method causes Spyro to constantly be moving forward at high speed, but as we mentioned before, holding down the swim button slows him down. To ensure the different areas of the level load in properly, we swim through the corridors to hit each load trigger. There are so many distant and high up platforms in this level, so it's very fortunate that we can swim in the air like this. But whereas we can charge into the smaller enemies whilst swimming, there is one single Cupid Riptock that we need to keep alive. You'll see why soon. Of course, we still can't rescue any dragonflies like this, and we can't kill any of the bigger Riptox either. Not to mention, there are some machines in this level that we need to power up with our electric breath, and we can't use that while swimming either. Also, the level has a maximum swimming height, so if we tried to swim to the top of this clock tower right at the end of the level, the game does not let us. Basically, we can't get everything with just a swim in air alone, so we need to start exploring areas on foot. Towards the end of the level, there is a large electrified pool of water. We don't want to touch that, but there is a smaller pool of water on the ledge above it. These two pools connect to each other, but it is safe to touch the one on the top. This will end the swim in air. Now we can jump down, kill the big rip top, and use the super flame to get rid of the storm clouds above the pool of water. This means we can get the underwater gems, and even swim back up to the upper platform again. The gaps we need to get over are a bit too wide here, which is annoying because there's a machine on one of them that we need to zap. We can get a walk in air by bonking into one of these pillars, but unfortunately we lose too much altitude to be able to jump onto the next platform. However, if we walk around the back of the next platform, we can see there is a small bridge above us. A lot of ledges like this are solid when standing on them, but they're not solid from underneath. After all, the developers would never expect anyone to get under these platforms. If we stand under the bridge, jump, and then head bash, we will clip right through the bridge and on top of it. We still can't reach the machine from here, but we can continue to the clock tower that we couldn't swim up before. Thankfully, it's just easy platforming and ladders to get to the top. There is a portal up here, but it just leads to a dogfight minigame. The lag was real during this one too. Once we're done here, we leave the clock tower, and we can see the start of the level in the distance. We're not going to get very far normally though, but thankfully we have enough height to get a walk in air to reach the ledge above the starting point. There is another portal up here, but this leads to the game's second speedway, so we can't make any progress in there. So, instead of using the walk in air to get to that portal, instead we can use it to reach one of the other areas of the level on foot. We walk all the way around the outskirts of this level to reach places we've not been able to stand yet, but this usually means we don't go through the loading triggers. Gems tend to stay loaded in, but not much else does. We can't even activate the machines without hitting the loading triggers first, so when we get that walk in air, we need to time the bonk just right so that Spyro is just low enough to get through the tunnel with the loading trigger in it, but still just high enough that Spyro doesn't get pulled to the ground. Now we can walk through to the other side in the previous area. The machine here can now be zapped. We can also use that same spot to get a walk in air over to the machine that is currently loaded in in that area. We will have to lose the walk in air to reach it though, but from here we can get another walk in air which is fairly precise if you want to avoid touching the whirlwind, and then we walk back to the first pool of water to get another swim in air. Now we swim to the next area, get a checkpoint here from the fairy, and then we use the nearby Riptox to kill us. Their aim was terrible, so this took longer than it should have. In hindsight, I probably could have just swam far down to hit the death plane, but the Riptox last hit was so hard it forced Spyro through the floor anyway. Now we will respawn in this same area, but without the swim in air. This also means we can kill those Riptox for their gems. There is a dragonfly flying around on the platforms above us. Normally, we would chase down the Feath to recover a wand, and then give that wand to a bear NPC, and he would create a whirlwind for us to get up there. But, if we jump up near the dragonfly from the floor, we can still make him fly around to the next platform. If we do this enough, then eventually we can get the dragonfly to fly over to the floating rainbow. This is exactly where we wanted him to go, because, just like the bridge from earlier, the rainbow isn't solid from underneath, and it's just low enough that we can jump and head bash to go right through it and on top of it. We then need to quickly rescue the dragonfly before it has a chance to fly away. The reason we had to chase the dragonfly 
fly to the rainbow is because we can't reach any of the other high platforms around here. However, we can still reach the third machine from the rainbow, so we power that up as well. Now we carry on to the next area, and we've not been here on foot yet, so we make sure to kill all the big Riptox for their gems as we go. The same goes for these Storm Cloud enemies too. However, right after the first Storm Cloud, we come to a wide gap, so we have no choice but to turn back. The game struggles to load some areas if we backtrack, but who's surprised at this point? If we use the swim in air again to get to the bigger pool of water, and then from there, we backtrack through the level on foot to find a dragonfly. By the way, the super flame power-up has no effect on the Riptox here for some reason. Don't ask. After that dragonfly, we continue to backtrack to the other end of the area that we couldn't reach on foot earlier. Getting across the moving platforms is a bit tricky without gliding, but it's still very doable. This allows us to reach and power up the fourth and final machine. If we look down from here, we can see a dragonfly on top of a tall pillar. We can jump down and reach the closest pillar, but it's clear that you are supposed to glide to the others as they are very far apart. So we need another way. If we ride the moving platform back, we can use this hole in the ground to get a very tricky walk in air. It's very precise, but as long as we bonk not too high or not too low, we can get the walk in air. Now, we can walk towards the dragonfly on the pillar, but as you can see, we're too low down. Even if we jump or head bash our ball breath, simply won't reach it from here. However, do you remember when I said we need to keep one of the Cupid Riptox alive? It was the Riptox on the ledge just over from us, and these Cupid Riptox can use their bow and arrows for ranged attacks. This is going to help us get a glitch that we haven't tried yet. It's basically a damage boost, but it's a major one. If we perform Spyro's head bash and take damage on the exact same frame, then Spyro will be sent upwards for the duration of the damage animation. The height we get is increased the longer the damage animation is, but to head bash and get hit by the Cupid's arrow on the same frame can be very difficult. We need to walk just close enough to aggro the Riptock, and we need to make sure that we are between the Riptock and the pillar we want to reach. As soon as the Riptock fires an arrow, we need to walk away so the arrow goes over our head, but then we jump up into the arrow and hit the head bash button on the very frame the arrow damages Spyro. If Spyro performs the head bash as normal, then we pressed it too early. If we take damage from the arrow, then we head bash too late. We also need to ensure that we have enough health to survive a hit if we're to take advantage of the damage boost. After very many attempts, we finally pulled off this damage boost. No one was more surprised than me. If you still need to talk to the final NPC to reach the dragonfly after activating all four machines, we can use the usual swim in air, then walk in air, and then head bash through the bridge again to reach that last NPC. That is Cloud9 finished with just the two speedway dragonflies remaining. We hand over our final rune to get the ice breath power. We use the ice breath to open the final gate in Dragon Realms. Or if you want, you can just charge right through the gate, because no one actually tested this game apparently. From here we can reach more gems, dragonflies, and two more level entrances. There is a third level entrance here too, but that's a lot trickier to reach. It's beyond these two platforms, but unfortunately the gaps between them seem far too wide, and despite numerous tries, we can't even get over the first one. There is a bridge after the first two gaps, and we thought of using a head bash to clip through from underneath, but the bridge is just too high up. We even tried to freeze the sheep fodder in the area and stand on top of them, but the game just doesn't let us. The sheep either end up floating floating in the air somehow, or they just push us through the wall to our death. I should have seen it coming by now. We can't even get a walk in air from this area either since the highest platform we can reach is still too low down. Plus, this part of Dragon Realms is the highest point of altitude that we can reach in the entire homeworld, so it's not like we can get a walk in air somewhere else and then travel here. What we can do is backtrack to the water near Luau Island entrance, submerge under the water, swim through the netting in this spot to just click right through, and now we can swim in the air and make our way to the area we couldn't reach. We can use this to gather all the remaining gems in Dragon Realms, but we still can't rescue the dragonfly up here. Even worse, we can't use the level entrance up here whilst we're swimming, and there's no way around that. All we do is clip right through the transport, and there's no water up here to end the swim in air either. This level would have been the next one in a casual run as it only requires 32 dragonflies to enter. The other two levels require 55 and 65, but we only 
have 45 so far. However, 45 dragonflies is exactly enough to enter a level that we bypassed earlier, Honey Marsh. The first part of the level is nice and easy. The platforming over the honey proves to be no issue at all. The same goes for the tank minigame. Soon we're making our way over some trees and we see a key on a faraway flower. We can get a walk in air from the tree and walk over to the flower. And even though it looks like we're too low down, we can just clip through with a head bash and get the key. There is also a single red gem on a high platform that we can't reach. We use the same walk in air once again and head bash to just be in range so that Sparks grabs the gem. This works better the more health we have since having full health maximizes Sparks range when collecting gems. We now need to make it over the honey onto these floating honeycomb platforms but they're also quite far apart. Landing in the honey causes damage which knocks us back too so it's not like we can use damage boosting here to our advantage either. What we did notice is that if we mash the charge button rapidly as we damage boost out of the honey, we're able to move forward just enough to land on the second honeycomb. In the next area, we descended down the giant flowers, grabbing all the gems on the way. One of the flowers is quite far, but a big charge jump still reaches it. We now find ourselves faced with a lot more floating honeycombs to get over. The gaps seem to be even wider than before, and the same spam charge method could only get us so far before we ran out of health. We're actually stuck down here too, since the only way back is a whirlwind. And we can't just kill ourselves because we got a checkpoint down here. We have no choice but to exit the level from the pause menu and re-enter. But not before the game shows us this poor excuse for a cutscene. We make it back to the flowers again, but instead of falling to the lowest flowers, we bonk into the side of the flower's petals from a higher flower to get a walk in air that is just low enough to get through the corridor. Now we can walk over the honey in the next area, and we can even still flame the machine from here. Whereas there's still plenty of platforming left in this level, it's fairly simple. We can even get to the chest that the key opens up for a dragonfly. We can even destroy all the beehives from a distance without any problems. Beyond the last machine, there is a portal that we can just reach if we stutter our charge whilst in the air like before. This portal just leads to a slide minigame. This might actually be one of the better minigame ideas in Enter the Dragonfly. The final platform of the level is out of reach though. Getting a walk in air around here seems impossible since it's all floating honeycombs with no ground under underneath. However, if we restart the level and then get that first walk in air again, we can use this to backtrack to the very beginning of the level. We can't hit the usual loading triggers when doing this, so the area is invisible, but if we bonk into a tree above ground, we can lower our altitude enough to hit those loading triggers, which means we can reach the final ledge from the other side. We can see the gems on this ledge, but the area itself hasn't loaded in. Thankfully, this is just a tunnel, so there's nowhere to fall anyway. It loads in as we travel through, and after getting all the gems here, that's 100% in Honey Marsh. This now puts our total dragonflies on 55, which also happens to be exactly the amount we need to access the next level, Thieves' Den. And this is the most difficult level in the entire run. There is a very specific order that we must do things here, otherwise we risk soft-locking ourselves in a glideless run. The reason for this is that the enemies in this level do not respawn. Even if we exit and re-enter the level, they will never respawn, and we need certain enemies alive so we can use them, otherwise we can't progress. We still need to kill all the enemies in the level though for a dragonfly reward at the end. I'll explain. There are 10 big Riptok enemies throughout this level, and they are the only enemies in this level. We will try to keep them numbered as we go. Straight away, we're free to kill the first Riptok that we see. The only way to kill these Riptoks is to use the wing shield to deflect their magic spells back at them. For some reason, we actually get better accuracy with this if we have our back to the Riptok whilst we're using the wind shield. Don't ask me why. After making our way over some pits with swinging axes, we see the second Riptok, and we want to keep this Riptok alive. Just beyond this second Riptok is a room with only a whirlwind that would normally take us to the upper floor. There doesn't seem to be any other way of getting up there. However, do you remember the damage boost method we got in Cloud9? We're going to use that again right here. If we can bait the Riptok to cast a projectile spell towards us as we're jumping, and then head bash on the same frame that it hits us, we can get quite a big damage boost. We need to use that to get to the upper floor without using the whirlwind. We need to aim 
position for the left side of the archway as we both move forward and get the frame perfect head bash as we get hit. After many, many, many attempts, we finally managed to pull off this damage boost. And this clipped us right into the room above. Up here is the third Riptock, but we can safely kill this one. Shortly afterwards, we find the fourth Riptock near another whirlwind. We need to do the exact same damage boost with this Riptock. We get the frame perfect head bash and we float up to the floor above us. Here we find the fifth Riptock behind a destructible wall, but we want to keep this one alive for later. Behind that Riptock is a portal to a platforming minigame. But like the one in Crop Circle Country, this can be beaten without gliding, despite it being quite difficult. When we exit the portal, once again we ignore the fifth Riptock, and there is a Dragonfly on a ledge above us in this room. But this can be reached with regular jumps just fine. As we exit the room, we see the sixth Riptock guarding a Dragonfly. We can kill this one with no consequence. We rescue the Dragonfly behind him, and then do some perilous platforming across these gaps, whilst avoiding more swinging axes. We can ignore the portal to our left as it leads to the game's third and final speedway, which is just as well because it's out of reach anyway. There are a couple of gems next to the portal but we'll come back for those later. At the end of these platforms we see the seventh Riptock but we leave him alive. Just beyond that we find the eighth Riptock and we can safely kill this one. The next area has a pool of water with a machine inside. Firstly we grab the chest key from this room. We can then use the ladder to get high above the water but we can't advance here without glass. Sliding. The gaps are simply too wide. There is a locked gate over there and we can open it by submerging under the water and charging into each of these giant buttons. We still can't get over to that gate from here though. However, first things first. Just as we did in Cloud9, if we bonk into the wall above the water and then hold the charge button, we will submerge before hitting the water and now we can swim in air. Fun fact, by default this level has a very low maximum height when swimming in the air and we can't even swim high enough to reach the platform with the gate we just opened. However, for whatever reason, if we have already entered a portal in this level, like the platforming minigame portal from earlier, then this removes that height limitation. Now we can swim wherever we want. We want to swim all over the entire level collecting all gems remaining. This is why we ignored the two gems next to the speedway portal since we could just swim and get them. We will need to return to the water once we're done to get back on foot so we can rescue the dragonflies, but we can at the very least make sure there are no more difficult to reach gems. You might want to leave some of the gems alone though, specifically the gems found just beyond the gate we opened. You'll see why soon. Unfortunately there is only one body of water in this entire level, so we must return to the same pool of water to remove the swimming air. Now we want to get up to the gate we opened on foot, and to do that we backtrack to Riptock number 7 that we spared earlier. We need another frame perfect damage boost, and this time we want to bonk into to the wall on the way down for a walk in air. We return to the room with the pool, and this altitude is good enough to just reach the platform with the open gate. It is safe to kill the ninth Riptock up here, but we face another problem. The following area isn't loaded. We must have skipped the loading trigger with our walk in air, but this is why we skip some of the gems right here. The gems stay loaded in and we can use them to determine where the ground is. It's a bit difficult, but we only need to clear clear a couple of the gaps in the area before it loads in properly. This reveals the 10th and final Riptock of the level, but we don't want to kill this one yet. Firstly, we jump down to the lower ledge to rescue a dragonfly. We are now stuck down here since the whirlwind is the only way back up. We must jump off the ledge to respawn at the most recent checkpoint, which was the room with the pool of water. We want to get back up there again though, so we repeat the steps that we took to get up there the last time, which means damage boosting off the 7th Riptock again, bonking to get the walk in air again, and then doing the blind platform again. Maybe try leaving at least one gem here now that we have to return. Now we must use the 10th Riptock for a damage boost to reach a higher platform. There is another dragonfly up here. A lot of gliding is intended to advance from here, but we can get a walk in air instead. With this, we can run to the end of the level and to the platforms above the end portal. There is a timed challenge here that requires us to use our ice breath to put out all the bonfires. The time limit on this challenge is very generous and we can reach most of the bonfires just fine fine, but two of them are on their own platforms and they're out of reach. We tried 
using a walk in air when activating the time challenge, but unfortunately, we need to be on the ground when going through these spires, otherwise it just won't register. We tried reaching the bonfires from out of bounds too, but nothing seemed to work. But we made a discovery. If you die during the challenge, when you respawn, the challenge timer is still going. This means that we could respawn at a checkpoint somewhere else in the level, as long as it's a checkpoint we can reach and then still get back here. So here's what we need to do. First, we kill ourselves to return to our most recent checkpoint near the pool of water. Now, we backtrack through the level until we get back to the portal behind the fifth riptop. We enter that portal and then leave again immediately. This now counts as a checkpoint and we want to keep this checkpoint. We progress to the seventh riptock again, and we repeat the process as before, the damage boost on the walk in air. Being this high up means that the fairy in the room below us can't zap us, and thus our latest checkpoint isn't updated. We platform blind once more, damage boost off the tenth riptock again, use the walk in air again to get back to the timed challenge, and now this is the hard part. We need to be very fast. We activate the challenge and then run to each bonfire that we can reach and extinguish them one by one. We then need to quickly run off the edge to kill ourselves. We will respawn at the portal right next to the fifth riptop. We turn our back to the riptop quickly and then we nail a frame perfect damage boost on our first try and bonk into the wall on the way down. This gives us just enough height on a walk in air to run over the top of the portal and clip out of bounds. We steer left as we run and and we can see the two remaining bonfires in the distance, in an unloaded area. We're able to charge all the way to them, and we need to aim for the bonfire on the right first. We charge jump to fall down when we get close enough, and then put it out immediately. We now need to make a very tight, blind charge jump to the last bonfire. The technique to maximize jump distance is to charge jump right away, and land on the edge of our platform. If we keep the charge button and the jump button held down, Spyro will jump again immediately upon landing. We can then mash the charge button in midair to stutter charge for a little bit of extra distance. This allows us to just reach the last bonfire right as the time limit expires. That is easily the hardest dragonfly in the entire game. Now from here we need to kill ourselves again to respawn back at the portal checkpoint. We progress through the level again to the seventh riptock, get the damage boost again and get the walk in air again one last time, walk to the upper platform above the water, platform blind through this area one last time, then kill the tenth riptop. We can death abuse again from here to go back to the portal yet again. Now from here we can progress through the level and kill the seventh riptop and the fifth riptop. We then backtrack through the level from here by jumping down this hole and killing the fourth riptop. We fall down another hole and kill the second Riptok. We have now killed all 10 Riptoks. We just need to get to the end of the level to be rewarded with a Dragonfly. We death abuse one more time to go back to the portal checkpoint. We then backtrack through the level again and fall down the first hole. We now need to get a walk in air as we fall down the second hole. There's really only one part where this is possible, as one of the statues down here on the wall is just close enough to bonk into on the way down. The altitude is is very specific though. We need to be just low enough to squeeze under the archway down here, otherwise we'll be pulled down to the ground further on. We can then backtrack through the very start of the level from here. It looks like we're too high to get out of the cave's entrance, but the upper left side of the cave's opening isn't very solid and we can clip straight through. From here there are two high platforms behind the starting platform, one with a chest on it and one that leads to the level's end. If we approach the chest, we are just high enough to open it whilst maintaining the walk in air, which is important. We can now walk to the other platform, but it's too high for us to jump onto. However, a head bash from underneath will clip us right through. The following gap is very difficult to clear without gliding, but a precise stutter charge is just enough to get us over there. This now leads us to the final NPC of the level, who will reward us with a dragonfly for killing all 10 Riptox. That was easily the hardest 
highest level in the entire run. We were able to get all 700 gems and 8 out of 10 dragonflies since two of them require playing the speedway. We now have a total of 63 dragonflies and there are still two more levels remaining. The level entrance we can access easily requires 65 dragonflies to open and the level entrance we can't reach requires only 32. However, thanks to our efforts in Thieves Den, we now know about a method of maximizing our jump distance. We charge jump and land on the very edge. With both the charge and jump buttons held down, we jump again upon landing. This isn't enough on its own though. Something else we can do is ensure that we land on the very left of the very edge. If Spyro's side touches the rock wall on his left, the game forces Spyro away from it by steering him to the right automatically. This proxy seems to boost Spyro's momentum slightly, and even then we still need to stutter charge in the air halfway through the jump if we want to reach the other platform. This is extremely difficult. I used the built-in slow motion cheat code to practice this jump. To make this game run in slow motion, pause the game and press left, left, right, left, a, or X if you're on PlayStation. That's just the first gap. There's still two more. We're still not quite high enough for a walk in air, or at least it doesn't seem like we are. After bonking, Spyro will fall a certain distance, and then the walk in air will occur if we're a certain distance away from the ground. Not too far, not too close. However, if we stand here and then jump and bonk into the wall at a certain height, as Spyro bounces back, he lands on the same platform, but he falls back just far enough that he falls over the edge. The time spent falling backwards whilst we're on the starting platform is taken into account before the game decides whether or not we get the walk in air. This means that we don't need to fall quite as far to the ground before the walk in air is achieved, and we're just high enough to not be pulled to the ground using this method. From here, we can head bash under the bridge to clip through as we suspected all along, and this skips the second gap. The third gap is the biggest by far. We'll need an even higher walk in air to reach that one. We can walk up the sloped edges of the bridge, but the game doesn't like it when we do. Spyro gets pushed off the bridge if we're not careful, but if we take it slow and precise, we can walk up a decent amount if we stay on the right side. From here, we can jump and bonk into the very highest point of the bridge for a walk in air, with an even higher altitude than before. Now jumping to the final ledge is easy, and we can finally reach the entrance to the next level on foot. There is also a dragonfly up here, which is the 10th and final dragonfly in Dragon Realms. We finally enter the next level, the Monkey Monastery, only we start this level on a small, isolated platform with a massive gap separating us from the rest of the level. There's no chance of getting a walk in air here either, as there are no low ledges, and there's nothing to stand on. We can't even stand on the NPC after we freeze him. There are just three gems on this starting platform and that's all we can get in this whole level. This leaves us on 64 dragonflies out of 90 and 5,503 gems out of 7,000. We can't make any more progress in the Monkey Monastery and we need 65 dragonflies to enter the game's final level. Unfortunately, this is where we hit a dead end in our run. Or do we? There is one other glitch we haven't used yet, and the reason for it is that it's completely broken. It's called the Dragonfly Duplication Glitch, and it's exactly what it sounds like. If there's a dragonfly that requires bubble breath to capture, then we can duplicate that dragonfly infinitely. All we need is access to at least one other level from the homeworld, with Dragonfly Dojo being the earliest. First, we breathe the bubble breath at the dragonfly, but then we open the atlas before the bubbles touch the dragonfly. We can use the atlas to fast travel to any level that we've already accessed, which is why you have to have unlocked at least one level first. We fast travel to another level, and during the loading screen, we can see the text at the bottom of the screen that says we caught the dragonfly. However, if we return to that same dragonfly, we can see that it's still there waiting to be captured. You can simply repeat this duplication glitch 
ad nauseum. If you do it more than 10 times, the atlas shows that you've gained more dragonflies than there are in the level. You can even do this until you have 90 out of 10 if you wanted. The game's completion percentage will still increase as if you've gotten all 90 dragonflies in the game. Although it can have some odd visual effects. When I was capturing footage for this, the atlas freaked out a bit. The biggest reason I didn't want to use this glitch is that even though we can trick the game into thinking that we had rescued all 90 dragonflies, every other level in the game would still read 0 out of 10. But of course, that means that we could just use the dupe glitch in every level where we can find a dragonfly and get them all to show 10 out of 10. This would get around having to do the speedways too. Like I said, the glitch is broken, so for this run, I'm only going to use it once. Also, whilst capturing footage for this glitch, Spyro decided to start walking into the wall by himself. Whoa! Whoa! What was that? <laughs> He's off! He's like, I'm sick of this sh I'm going. We were suddenly softlocked. Thanks, game. Anyway, if we load an older save, we can go back to the point before we rescued the 10th dragonfly in Dragon Realms, which also happened to be our 64th dragonfly in total so far. We can now duplicate this dragonfly to put our total on 65 instead. Since we only used the dupe glitch to increase our total to 11 out of 10, and not to avoid actually reaching any of the dragonflies in the game, I don't feel like this breaks the spirit of the challenge. With that though, the game allows us to to access the final level that requires 65 dragonflies to enter, and that level is Jurassic Jungle. There is a bit of platforming early on, but it's very easy. We come to a tunnel entrance. There's a locked chest to the right, so we'll have to come back to that later. There's a lava pit in front of the tunnel, which makes getting in awkward, but you can just walk around the edge. The tunnel has some more platforming over lava, but it's not too difficult. This leads to a room with a big statue in the center. There's a ladder in here that helps us to reach some gems on the statue, and it helps us to reach a key to the chest. There is a puzzle in this room that requires us to flame the coloured jewels in the correct order, but after that, this is where we run into a dead end. To continue the level now, we would need to get to the very top of this room, but the gaps between each part of the statue are too wide and we can't reach the head. Before we try to work out how to progress, we backtrack to the chest and rescue the dragonfly inside. Now we return to the room with the statue, as we need this room to help us get a walk in air. It's the same deal as before, we need to make sure we're low enough to travel back through the tunnel again, but not too low that we get pulled to the ground. We can use this to walk over the top of the start of the level, and as usual the level's ending loops to the start. Now we are essentially playing the level backwards, just like in Crop Cycle Country. We find invulnerability power-ups that allow us to walk on the lava temporarily. This is the main gimmick of the level, which works for us, as that doesn't involve gliding. We can use this to kill all the dinos on the lava, and to get to a portal for a tower climbing minigame. The climb can be done casually, but if you ever wanted to make this easier, just hold down the look button whilst the mouse is talking, and as long as we keep it held when the minigame starts, none of the traps on the tower activate, so we just get a nice and safe climb to the top. After we exit the portal, we continue to progress backwards through the level. Eventually, we come to two platforms that are much too far apart to get over without gliding. We can see that the platform at the end of this area is quite high up too, so no amount of charge stuttering was going to get us up there. We need a high platform somewhere else in the level that we can reach to help us walk in air, but unfortunately, that platform doesn't exist. In theory, we could use a damage boost to gain height and then bonk into the wall as we fall back down, just like we did in Feet's Den, but in this level, there's a better way. Back in the area where we first saw the power-ups, there is an electric fence. Of course, the fence damages Spyro if we touch it. However, if we use the invulnerability power-up first, the fence won't damage us, but it still knocks Spyro into the air. If we keep bonking the fence, we'll just keep getting boosted higher and higher. The goal is to bonk into a wall at the highest point for a walk in air. Not all walls this high up are solid though, of course, but when we do find a solid wall next to the fence, we can get a walk in air just low enough to go back through the tunnel. Unfortunately, the path to the platforms over the lava is too high up and we're forced down to the ground. We need to find a way out of bounds instead. After we get the walk in air, 
If we follow the path to the portal that we entered earlier, we can clip out of bounds above it. From here, we can walk all the way around the lava and to the other side. We can grab the collectibles over here and complete a volcano slide minigame. Getting to the next area is our next challenge. The gaps over the lava are pretty wide, but they look doable, although I tried many times and died over and over. Even the charge stutter wasn't getting us over there. It's only this first gap that's the major challenge, so we just need to find a way over this. So check this out. If you bonk into a wall before landing in the lava, we won't take damage. If we can move along this wall and bonk into it over and over whilst moving towards the platform we're trying to reach, we can slowly make our way there. This was very tricky and required a fair few attempts. The hardest part is arguably getting on the platform itself. When trying to bonk, we missed the wall a few times, so we took a bit of damage on the way. But thankfully, we had just enough health to make it to the platform. The next two gaps can be charged, jumped over with no problem. This path leads us to the top of the puzzle room that we were in earlier at the start of the level. This means that we have gone backwards through the level all the way to the other side of the giant statue that we couldn't get over before. The gem on top of the statue's head still looks like it's going to be just out of our reach though, but get a load of this. Did you know that the developers put too many gems in this level? The total number of gems for this level in the atlas is 600, but there's actually just over 600. As soon as our total hits 600, all other gems in the level disappear right in front of our eyes. So there's no need to get the gem on the statue's head after all. All that's left to do now is travel back to the start of the level, use the shortcut at the end of the level which is now open, and get the last dragonfly from the NPC. That's 100% in Jurassic Jungle. We have now collected 74 dragonflies out of 90 and 6,103 gems out of 7,000. This is the maximum possible completion without flying or without a single glow. Glide. This is excluding the dragonflies you could get via the dupe glitch of course. This is where a glideless run ends. However, if we want to turn this challenge into a minimum glide challenge, we can use one single glide to clear the gap at the start of Monkey Monastery. The jumps following this glide are quite tricky and we can't quite make it over to the chest, but what we can do is lag the game to clip through the door that leads to the end of the level, just like we did in Crop Circle Country. So once again, we'll be playing this level backwards too. We want to make sure that we get the checkpoint right behind this door. Otherwise, dying would send us back to the very start of the level again, and then we'd be forced to use another glide. At the top of the stairs, we find a portal to another slide minigame, and this one has a time limit. Sliding through the flags shaves off a couple of seconds each, but if we want to make this really easy, we can use the same trick we used in Jurassic Jungle's tower climbing mini game. We hold the look button during the monkey's dialogue and the time limit won't start until we let go. As long as we let go of the look button just before hitting the bottom, this works fine. As soon as we return to the level, Spyro's legs stopped working for some reason. We can use the steps here to get a walk in air, but it needs to be just precise enough that we can squeeze under the door that we clipped through earlier. This allows us to reach a high ledge where we can thaw a yeti and grab some gems. The door we clipped through has opened now. We take the other path at the top of those stairs until we get to an area that you wouldn't normally reach until the end of the level. Right away we light a rocket that breaks a lump of ice far away. This is where things get tricky. There are many platforms in this area but they're all very far apart from each other. We can get to a high ledge on the platform that we're on and thaw the second yeti. We want to reach another platform from here with a walk in air but there are several platforms to choose from all around the area. The order we go to each platform platform is quite important. Specifically, we need to visit the far left platform last. Close to this platform, we can find a key that was stuck in the ice that we blew up earlier. Although, after travelling to any platform around here with the walk in air, we get stuck on that platform as soon as we become grounded. We could exit the level from the pause menu and then re-enter it, but that would mean doing that glide at the beginning of the level again. Instead, we can jump off the edge to respawn at the latest checkpoint. This is the checkpoint that we made 
made sure we got after clipping through the door. All collectibles will remain with us even if we die. I hope you've got enough lives because we're going to need them. Now we can repeat the walk in air and go to the small center platform this time. The cannon here can be used to both break the ice wall in front of us and shoot down the birds flying around for a dragonfly. We jump off the edge again, respawn at the same checkpoint and then get the walk in air again. We thaw the yeti behind the ice wall. The routine continues, we die, respawn, walk in air, but this time we want to get on top of the bigger central platform. We don't quite have the height needed to reach it though, and the ceiling above the frozen yeti is solid. After a while, we did find a way up there. If we walk into the right side of the cave opening, it's just about possible to clip inside the platform. The game tries to push us back out, but if we quickly jump and head bash as we clip inside, we can then clip through the ceiling and get on top. However, it is very important that we do not go near the fairy on this platform. We cannot let our checkpoint get updated to this platform, otherwise we will be forced to perform at least one more glide to make any further progress. The issue is, there's a cannon on this platform that we want to use, and it's right next to the fairy. There is a way to avoid getting zapped by the fairy though. You'll notice that the fairy starts as a sparkle, and only turns into a fairy when we get close close. If we walk just far enough away from the fairy to make her turn into a sparkle, but then quickly circle back towards the fairy again, we can get just close enough before the sparkle animation had time to finish. This results in the fairy remaining as a sparkle until we walk away and return again. So when we get this, as long as we stay close to the sparkle, she will not zap us. Now we can get in the cannon and break another ice wall. Since our checkpoint didn't get updated, we can now jump off the edge and respawn at the previous checkpoint. Another walk in air later and we get behind the ice wall that we just destroyed to thaw another yeti. We death abuse again, respawn and walk in the air to the right this time for some more gems. We death abuse and respawn yet again to walk in air to the far right platform to get onto a path that leads to the next area. However, eventually this path is blocked by another ice wall that's supposed to be destroyed from the other side. We are going through the level backwards after after all. Instead, we want to get another walk in air at the usual spot and then backtrack the way that we first got to this area. We can't walk beyond this roof as it's solid, but we can use it to get another walk in air with a bit less altitude. Now we can clear the gaps that we couldn't get over at the start of the level. Not much beyond here requires any gliding. Most of the platforms can be reached with various jumps. There is one high ledge behind an ice wall that a whirlwind usually takes us to, but we were able to use a frame perfect damage boost using a mammoth enemy below. That's the last yeti thawed out. Once we have all the gems and the dragonflies in this area, the path ahead just leads us to the other side of the ice wall that was in our way earlier, so there's no need to go that way. Instead, we get a walk in air here above the ice, which actually makes this a skate in air I suppose, and we skate back over the ledges that we walked over, jump down and open the chest. It's a Luau Island themed chest by its design for some reason, but oh well. There is now one final thing left to do. We mentioned that there was one platform that we must visit last. So we must get one final walk in air in that area and walk over there. Here is a portal to a plane flying mini game that we finish with ease. The reason we had to do that part last is that the portal to these mini games also count as checkpoints, which we learned from Feed's Den. So if we'd come to this portal earlier, before finishing everything else in this level, we wouldn't have been able to death abuse to get off this island since we would have just respawned at the portal again. If this were any other level, we would have just used the pause menu to leave and then re-enter but then that would have put us back at the very start of the level and we would have had to have performed a glide again. Anyway, with that we've managed to get 100% in Monkey Monastery. Now we can challenge the final boss for real, Ripto. For some reason, Ripto has more forms if we have more completion percentage. He has a second form if we have 85% completion and a third form if we have 100% completion. Our final completion was above 85% but below 100% since there are 6 dragonflies that we can never get due to the speedways, unless we duplicate them. So in this run we only see Ripto's first and 
and second forms. Not much else changes though, we just need to switch up the breaths that we use. The routine is still the same. Once Ripto is defeated, we are rewarded with the worst static background image for credits I have ever seen in a video game. We have done it. Can you beat Spyro Enter the Dragonfly without gliding? Well, the answer isn't very clear. It all depends on your own criteria. We proved the final boss can be beaten without gliding right at the start of the video. But if you're looking for 100% completion like I was, you will always be six dragonflies short due to the speedways, unless you use the duplication glitch. But even then, you still need one single glide at the start of Monkey Monastery. So I suppose this means that if you allow the duplication glitch, then the entire game is possible to 100% complete in one single glide. Regardless, despite all the technical issues and glitches, I still really enjoyed this challenge. I wasn't expecting it to be as difficult as it was. I need to give a big thank you to everyone on the Spyro speedrunning Discord server, especially Groink, who taught me so much about the game, and to Snuggles, who provided me with footage here and there. Give them a follow if you want to learn more about Enter the Dragonfly speedrunning. If you enjoyed this video, then you're on the right channel. Channel, there's plenty more to come, so please subscribe and follow our Twitch channel too. Speaking of Twitch though, I need to thank both our Twitch subs and our patrons. They are A Lazy Dragon, Amber Sky, Ancient Swords, Argosius, Alti Biscuit93, Big Wolf Chris, Crawling Relsa, Dino1303, D Stut, Duncan F93, Dweegee, Evolve Pixel, Finn Living with a Ghost, Heiki Joey14, Henneman1, Ewoot James, Indvdu, Jesus Christ 00 AD, Jin 0505, John Fitz 49, Kedja 4213, Kami 7YT, Kid Vermin, Mathree Phyllis, Mel Phyllis, Miss Barbs, Nath HD123, Nerd Paladin, Nurse Bobber, Plague Sloth, Spectrum Z90, Static Jokes, Sunbro 77, Tame Hunter, 10 divided by 6, Terry Dur, TG Side Effects, That Chloe is Odd, The Bloody Screen, The Jammy Emperor, The Lumiant Gamer, The Player 96, Tim Zero, Tor ZH, Tauster, Triceratopsical, and True DK Zero. And of course the patrons as well. They are a Lazy Dragon, Anthony Kermack, Courtney, LED23, Oscar Olsen, and Skirts. Thank you all so very much. If Spyro Challenges is what you're after, then we've already made no gliding videos on the original trilogy. The playlist is linked on screen now. Or, if you want to see some Ratchet & Clank Challenge videos, we have some of those too. Like beating Ratchet & Clank 3 without jumping. That kind of stuff. Check it out.